on this episode, new artwork. Oh my gosh, who drew those amazing ships? Well, not me. Christian tries to import those ships into my P8 file. Ooh. And of course, ooh, baby, that didn't work. And then other things break in interesting ways. Our, our ship doesn't look right. Mm, hi everybody, welcome. This is Christian from LazyDesk Academy and welcome to <clears throat> episode 18 of our tutorial on how to make a shmup in Pico 8. Uh, basic shmup, simple shmup. And yet we are, or you know, we've been working for 18 episodes and we're still not quite there. There's still uh, a ways to go and I'm, mm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not paying attention to what I'm writing here. Okay, let us look at the shmup. Mm. music to my ears. Um, all right, so we have a little uh, ship that flies around. We can shoot at things. Uh, amazing explosions. <clears throat> There's kind of like a wave system happening. Um, now, I have a to-do list, but I, I kind of like wanted to maybe just as a warm-up exercise, I kind of like wanted to do something. Something that bothered me is that if I lose all my lives, uh, like so, you get this screen and it's like this red screen. I mean, it's it's dramatic for right but something i don't like is that it would be nice to kind of see what killed you and you don't really see what killed you because the game is kind of like wiped immediately and you don't see anything so it would be nice for the game over screen for example to show some um as with the with a wave screen where you can see the game right it would be nice if you could see the game in the game over screen so let's uh let's let's tackle that first and then let's Look at the to-do list later. Let's just do like a little warm-up exercise. Okay, so let us go to the draw um, draw tab, uh, and I wanted to show something off. You can, if you hold Alt, the Alt button, and press up and down, you can jump um, from function to function. So you can like quickly jump through all of the functions in this tab. So this is really, really useful. So for example, here we have um, draw over. This is the thing that we want to update. Perfect. Um, something I wanted to do use is the same thing that we used in the wave text in the in the mode that shows the next wave, uh, where I just I just want to draw the game. I'm just instead of clearing the screen, I will just draw the game, and then the game over stuff will be drawn on top of that. Uh, and in order to test that, I'm going to go in the uh, zero tab, and I'm going to set my lives to to one, so I die faster. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, yeah, see, that looks a lot better. That looks so much better. I can immediately see what what hit me. The only problem is that um, I don't know. I liked how the explosion happened. Do you saw the animation of the particles? This is because we animate the particles in the draw function, so you kind of like the the explosion wasn't frozen. You can kind of like saw the explosion happening. That's cool. Um, but something I don't like here is that the ship is blinking uh, because it seems like I still have a ship. I don't know. Maybe we can make the ship go away. Uh, let's try to make the ship go away. Um, this is going to be a draw function. Uh, when we're drawing the ship here, right? Uh, I'm just going to put... Th this whole part is just drawing the ship, deciding whether or not the ship is being drawn. So something we can do here is just do like an if statement. If uh, lives... Uh, uh, greater than zero, then, and if the lives are greater than zero, only then are we going to draw, um, you know, take care of drawing the ship and so forth. And if, if uh, the lives fall down to zero or below zero, then we're not going to draw any ship sprite. Uh, and let's see how that works. So here's the enemy. I'm going to get hit by the enemy. And see, that makes more sense to me because now the ship has really exploded and 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 it's not long and no longer there anymore. And that kind of like I don't know. That makes sense to me. Okay, that's good. That's good. Now, because we don't have the red background, maybe the game over is not dramatic enough. So let us uh, make the um, game over a bit more dramatic by giving it a red, a uh, red color. Uh, I think that's that would be better. And I. Th Thought it was a bit too too far to the right. Let's let's tweak this a little bit. Forty five. 
I think it's. Uh, mm. I want to. I want to put it there. It's, it's difficult to center things. Maybe we're gonna create a function that centers the text for us. Yeah, but no, that makes sense. So the thing is, <clears throat> old video games sometimes had annoying soundtracks, and I don't know if I'm I'm gonna be able to listen to this jingle over and over again. We're gonna have to think about this a little bit. Maybe you can tweak the jingle a little bit so it's so it's more uh, I don't know like more pleasant to li listen to all the, over and over again. But no, every, uh, otherwise everything is nice. Um, maybe on the next episode we're gonna do kind of like a similar, similar makeover. Um, oh yeah, it would be maybe also good to have the same thing with the win function when we win the game, right? Um, to show, let's do that. Uh, let's draw the game uh, in the win function as well. So when we win, we will still see the space and everything. So let's see how that works. Number three, and wait, no, no, number four. Yeah, yeah, no, that I like that better. And then, in uh, when we show the congratulations, then we can um, do it in a more pleasant color, maybe like in a twelve or so, so um, it looks nice. But yeah, it's just like, you know, um, we're gonna take care of that later on because we might, might want to show this high score here as well. That's something we're gonna deal later on with. Um, and also, I don't like the start screen is something also that we might want to tweak a little bit, maybe show a star background here. Uh, but yeah, that's something that let's, let's just like, you know, let's just do like warm up, kind of like t uh, doing it uh, or makeover of one screen at the beginning of each episode, kind of like to slowly get there, you know, these are not necessary essential things, but you know, it's kind of like, it makes the game feel more finished when you work on these things. And so sometimes it's worth investing a little bit of time to kind of like have this idea, this this, this feeling that, that um, things are progressing. But this is not the thing I wanted to do today. Today I wanted to do Let's get multiple enemies in here. That's something I wanted to do. Uh, one of the uh, doggy zones uh, was to uh, get more enemies in here. And alas, I didn't do it, Haha! <laughs> but I did prepare something. Okay, so check this out. Uh, I have my uh, uh, Pico 8 window here on my desktop and I have this little, this little PNG here. I'm gonna open this PNG. I'm gonna scale this a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in so what you see. Oh, you, you see, there's there's a whole bunch of ships. Oh my gosh, who drew those amazing ships? Well, not me. <laughs> those were the beautiful people from the Discord. So uh, some, some time ago when I was like recording these uh, uh, or about to record some of the uh, early episodes, I asked people to um, uh, donate ships, donate ship design, enemy designs to uh, the Shmup tutorial and a lot of people from the Discord did. Uh, and this is kind of like a selection of some of the things that uh, were donated. I, I think they're really, really pretty. I even have a legend. So you know who did what. Uh, and some of the texts here might not be completely up to date, but um, you know, just so you know who is responsible for which ship. I have my favorites here, I have to admit. Um, but yeah, these are like the people who are responsible for all those, those beautiful ships here. Thank you so much for donating the ships. And there is even more. If you go to the Discord, there's still more people donating more ships. I especially so there's one person missing and it's Mike Sta. Uh, and uh, he or they um, were working on their own uh, shmups. And um, and they actually donated like whole sprite sheets from their previous shmups they were working on. So yeah, there's so yeah, there's a lot more resources to grab in the shmup uh, Discord if you want to check them those out. For now, you can use all of these uh, ships that I will be using um, today. I will now import those ships into my P8 file. Ooh. Ooh. All right, so here's how this works. I have this little ship's P um, little image prepared here. Uh, I'm gonna go to page number two here and let's see how that works. I'm just gonna drag and drop it in here in the top left corner here, bam. Ooh, baby, that didn't work. 
<laughs> that didn't quite work. Let's try this again. Uh, let's undo this. Uh, oh yeah, because uh, the problem is when you drag and drop, it will drop the image where um, your real cursor is. So uh, let me try this again. I'm going to select uh, this time around this left corner and on tab number two. Oh yeah, baby, that works now. Okay, so now tabs two and three are full of those beautiful ships and you can pick and choose and select the uh, enemies that we want to use in our little shmuff. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so we can drag and drop in files, that's really nice. Um, but what if you want to get uh, graphics out of Pico 8? I won't maybe show this off as well. So the way this works is you type in export and then you say my sprites or any other name, uh, .png. And it exports the entire sprite sheet into a PNG file and you can now open it in your you know, Photoshop or any kind of other uh, image editing program and uh, edit this. And then you can drag and drop it back in. You can also import it. You can use this. There is, I've been attacked by a space invader and I have not destroyed him. And he might might kill me. So if that happens, um, well, you're gonna see it. Um, so you can then go import my sprites uh, .png, and that will import. That will basically do the same thing as drag and drop. Um, but with a file that you have in your folder. Uh, now, like again, as a reminder, you can as always type in folder. And that will open like the window of where uh, you were all your files or your PQ8 files are. And this is my shmup uh, P8 file. And this is my sprites PNG file. And if I double click on this, you can see my entire sprite sheet. <laughs> it's very tiny, uh, but you can see my entire sprite sheet as a PNG file. And I can open this in Photoshop or as sprite or any kind of program, external program that's maybe more powerful at editing, uh, at editing, editing pixel data. And uh, yeah, you can do uh, shenanigans there, or maybe you can share sprite sheets with people, whatever you want. Okay, so this is kind of like a, like an overview, general, maybe a bit of chaotic overview here, but of how to import uh, uh, data, how to import images into uh, Pico 8, and how to export them as well. And yeah, here's a question from the future with a, a short um, addition. So if you are using the Pico 8 educational version, that one that uh, runs in the browser, then sadly I have bad news. None of these things that I've shown you will work. So you cannot just drag and drop an image file into the ed educational version. That won't work at all. And you cannot export or import uh, PNG files uh, from the ed educational version. Sadly, that's kind of like a big limitation of the ed educational version. In order to benefit from all those features, uh, you have to purchase the downloadable version of Pico 8. Um, the only option that is left for you if you're using the educational version is to just copy the um, sprites, you know, pixel by pixel, basically redraw them or just draw your own sprites. All right, so now that we have this huge selection of, of beautiful ships, um, I, I, now this is really difficult now because I have to like choose now. I have to pick, I have to pick ships that I, wa I want to be using. So I, I off the bat, I have to admit, I really would like this guy. This might be like the final boss here. It's just two frames, but it's just really beautiful, beautiful. Uh, uh, I think beautiful pixel art. Uh, the problem that we have here, and you can already see the challenge here, this is going to be a um, bigger enemy. This is not just like a single sprite. These are like two by two sprites. We already did this when we animated the explosions, uh, but we need to kind of like uh, uh, maybe expand our enemy system to deal with bigger uh, sprites. We need to maybe tweak the collision detection. This is going to be a bit of a challenge. Um, uh, for example, these guys here, I really like them. They're really nice goblin kind of creatures, but there's also going to be a bit of a challenge and I want, and that's why I, I, why I want to maybe try them. Um, and the reason why is that they are just two frames. And so far our animation system kind of like expects more than two frames, or actually it's, it's uh, we're going to have to uh, see how that works with the animation system. So I, I want to pick some uh, of those sprites here that are going to be a special, you know, programming challenges that are going to be a bit, a bit tricky here. This guy might be also interesting because with this guy, you might want to actually uh, go back and forth. Don't just like scroll through. Yeah, that's going to be, it's going to be interesting. Or maybe this driller. I like the driller as well. 
And personally, I also like this this ship. I think this is going to be definitely one of the picks. Right, so I said four enemies. We, I already have the green enemy, so three enemies left. One of them will be the final boss, so we want to add two more enemies. So how about I will pick... Oops, this is not what I wanted. I pressed just some buttons suddenly. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, let's just pick this guy because it's two frames and it's going to be a bit of a challenge of, of implementing this. And let's pick this guy because I really like how it spins. Um, let's try that. Right, so let us... Um, see where we are creating an enemy and let us think about how we can expand this. So this is page number one. And now I have a waves and enemies um, tab and maybe I will copy this in, in there. Let me look for the function that is, yeah, there's a spawn and function. I'm just going to cut this out here and I'm going to go here and I'm going to paste this in. So the spawn and function has been moved to tab number four. And let's let's gonna see let's let's see what's happening here. So we're spawning an enemy, and it creates an enemy uh, at a random position. It has a sprite, and that's it. And then health, and then there's a flash ability, and just the enemy is just put in there. Okay. So now the problem is that um, we are we're gonna have multiple enemies, so we might, might want to like specify maybe through an argument what kind of enemy we are actually want to spawn, right? So let's um, n-type. Uh, we're going to spawn an n-type. And now with a lot of the things are actually maybe things that are going to stay around. Uh, the sprite and HP is definitely something that will be uh, custom depending on the enemy. But maybe like for now the positions are going to be uh, always the same. Uh, the position stuff is something that we're going to have to think about. This is going to be a bit difficult. Right now the enemies are coming from the top of the screen, but there's also like uh, shmups, like especially older shmups, like Galaga, uh, where the enemies are kind of like arranged in rows and you shoot at them, right? And maybe that would be better. Hmm. I am not exactly sure how we're going to deal with this. This is a que general a question mark right now. And the flash. It's definitely something that I want to keep around at zero. That's like set up this this flashing ability. Um, right. So what we're gonna do with the n type is something like if n type equals and this is gonna be really stupid. If this is one, then actually let's do something like if n type equals nil or and type equals one. So this is gonna be any number one because we're spawning an enemy, we're using spawn and without any uh, arguments somewhere. And this kind of like catches those situations where we call the spawn and without any kind of uh, argument. In this case, we're just gonna spawn the default enemy, okay? And then else if n type uh, equals two then and so this this was green enemy and i'm gonna i'm gonna write a, a little note here green alien and if n type equals two um let's say that's gonna be a red flame guy uh he has um i'm gonna deal with the actual information later on uh if n type equals three and that's gonna be um spinning ship and if L uh, n type equals four, that is going to be a boss, right? Okay, so let us take care of the sprite and the HP first, and then we're going to think about the things later on. So let's uh, just co copy and paste all the information over. Now, ref right now, we're just going to assume all of these will have five HP. We're not going to um, experiment with the, with the HP f uh, yet. But yeah, this is the flamey guy here. And the sprite is 148. So here, the red flame guy, we're going to set the sprite to 148. And then here, there's this guy here. That's a spinny ship. Um, and that's going to start at 184. 148, 184, 184. And then the boss enemy, uh, that's going to be this guy over here. He starts with at 208. Like so. <sighs> 
Okay, uh, let's just see if this runs without any kind of error, and then we're gonna see what's what's wrong. All right, so we are flying around. Okay, that seems good. <laughs> Intended player experience. <laughs> Um, so let us do it um, that, so we have four enemies, right? And we have four four waves. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, each wave we're gonna spawn a different enemy and then we're gonna make, work, like keep working on the code until it doesn't throw any errors anymore. <laughs> That's my goal here. Um, generally, you know, as you guys, I'm kind of like not really sure, you know, what the next step is. There's a lot of things that we have to do. And it's it's very easy to be like, oh man, I just like I don't even know where to go here, right? There's so many things on the list. Oh, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. But I think it's good to pick something that you can do right now. And I just want to have a second enemy. I just want to have this red weird guy on the screen. So this is going to be like a good next step. And then, then you do the next step afterwards. And eventually those steps will finish the game. Um, right. So... Um, waves and enemies. Uh, here's when we do the waves, right? Here's where we're spawning uh, the enemies, right? Spawn wave. Okay, that's good. I see it. Right, so we're going to go if wave equals one, then uh, we are going to spawn enemy number one. Else, if wave equals two, then we're going to spawn N uh, two. That's going to be the green guy. Uh, no, that's going to be the, the flamey guy. And then actually we can already spawn all the other enemies as well. So that's going to be the spinny ship and that's going to be uh, the the boss. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 okay, no. So this is four, this is three, one, two, three, four, something like this. We could basically also say something like, spawn n wave right like that that would <laughs> so we don't have to do the if statement that would be a much easier way to do this um but we might need the if statements later on maybe we're gonna want to spawn multiple enemies generally that's kind of like i mean it's a bit of a bit of a hacky situation but if we don't have too many waves that's that's as good as a solution as any to just create the levels right we're just gonna have one wave number one and then just a list of enemy spawns right uh, but maybe later on we're gonna actually do something about that. Let us just try this and see what happens. All right, it didn't work. That's good. Okay, SPR. It tried to spawn an enemy, but the en enemy didn't have an SPR. Didn't have a sprite. Ah, I can already see that problem. I made a typo here. It says here N Utpe. That's that should be N type. Let's try that now. Okay. Bam. First wave done. Now it didn't spawn my fiery guy. Or maybe it did. I think it did it did. Yeah, here. See, if the sprite is greater than 25, we reset it to 21. So I think with all of our new enemies, they have definitely sprites that are greater than 25. So the animation, the way we set up the animation, uh, actually resets them all to the green guys. I'm going to turn off, I'm going to quote this all out, uh, because I want to turn off all the entire animation system right now. Jesus, this... This Space Invader is, is going to be a bit of a difficulty here. Alright, so now the enemies are not animated, but that's okay. That's the red guy. And that's the speedy ship. And that's the boss. Ah, yeah, boy! All right, so let us think about how are we going to do animation. So um, I had some uh, different ideas. One idea would be to be like, okay, like uh, we have SPR, we got a starting sprite, and then we just gonna you know increase the sprite number until it reaches kind of like a, 
and we are going to have a second properties telling like, okay, this is the last sprite of the animation. And when the last sprite of the animation is reached, you just rewind to the beginning sprite, right? That's, that would work in most cases. And the only problem I have is with the boss enemy. The boss enemy kind of has like these two uh, sprites and they're not consecutive, right? So it wants to go from 208 to 210. It kind of like skips. It, it skips a sprite and and so therefore we cannot use kind of like this technique where we just keep adding something to the sprite number and we kind of have to maybe uh, do a more uh, a little bit more elaborate setup here for the animation um, something that we did previously I don't know if you remember um, we definitely did where did we do this well we did this in definitely in explosion where we had like the sprite based explosion you remember that we had like, like an array and that array had a list of all the different uh, frames in the animation and that may that's maybe something i want to be actually doing right now uh, so let's try that um, so here when we have uh, the alien here um, we're just going to go something like my and dot any that's going to be animation and uh, this property will receive a array like we can put an array in a in a property of an object, which is like if you think about it, we have an array of objects of enemies, and then inside there's gonna be one enemy that's an object, and inside that object there's gonna be multiple properties, and one of the properties will be also an array, right? You can and then those arrays could in contain more objects, like right? you can just mm, there is you can create quite a, a labyrinth, a rabbit hole of of you know nested uh, arrays and objects. That's definitely something I can pull off. Uh, for now, I just want to have like this little any property and for my enemy and that any property will just list a bunch of uh, frames for that enemy's animation. So there's gonna be 21, 22, 23, 24. 21, 22, 23, 24, okay. Mm, now we're gonna do the same with the flamey guy, but the flamey guy will have only two entries in this array. It's gonna be 20, uh, 148 and 149. 148, 149. Now uh, the spinning ship will have 184, 185, uh, all the way uh, until 87. So 100, 184, right? 185, 186, 187. And then, and that's why we're doing this, the boss will also have an animation that will be just like two frames and now this allows us to skip frames. And it's like, okay, wow, we just like for this one exception from this one boss exception, we set up this whole complicated animation system. But I think that kind of animation system is maybe also good in general because it allows us to have uh, more control over the animation. And it's all, uh, something that we can also do with this kind of system is also we can like rewind animations as well. We can go back and forth. Uh, that's something that we cannot do if we rely on the animation being, you know, like, in sequence on the on the sprite sheet. Uh, right, so what we do we want to do? We want to try 208 and 210. <clears throat> okay, that's good. So now we want to write an animation system that will um, will go through this um, through this animation sheet basically. Um, let us do something like my n dot any Right. And then we're going to set it to one. And then in the update function here, where we are animating, we're going to do something like my n dot any frame uh, plus equals 0 0.4. That's something that's a similar thing that we did here. And then we're going to go uh, my n dot spr equals um, so we're going to change the sprite and we're going to set it to uh, we're going to grab the animation that we have my n.ani uh, square brackets 
Uh, so we're going to grab one of the frames from our animation, and that's going to be uh, um, floor my n dot any frame. That's good. Um, something I want to do that it's not included here is it doesn't loop the animation, so I want to add that. <clears throat> I'm going to say if my n dot any frame if floor my frame dot any frame is greater than hashtag my n dot any then uh, my n dot any frame equals one. Uh, just to ex explain what we did here. <clears throat> So we are flooring the any frame. So the any frame is basically on which frame of the animation are we? Um, but like uh, like a, a little twist, like something that makes things a bit more complicated is we adding a comma value. So this could be like we could be on a 1.5th frame of the animation, uh, and when that happens, we just want to strip off the stuff behind the comma value, right? So we we're taking off the uh, we're taking the the frame that could be a comma value, we and we're using the floor function to strip off the comma value. So we just have like the actual you know the the, the integer uh, frame number that we want to show, and then we're going to see like if this number is greater than uh, the number of animation frames that we have, like the number of entries in our animation array, then. That means that we uh, actually are reached the end of our animation and we want to loop to the beginning. And in this case, I want to reset my animation frame, uh, my frame counter uh, down to, to one so we can begin the animation from scratch. And then here again, maybe to reiterate, uh, we have the animation sprite and we set it to a frame from our an animation sequence from our array that contains multiple numbers that you know have like numbers for sprites uh, that the animation will switch to and uh, we pick we use this uh, any frame property but we floor it uh, to select the correct frame for the next you know correct cor the the correct frame for for the current animation i forgot uh, uh, a bracket there, uh, parentheses. Let's see how that works. Mm, please work. Oh, it works. There we go. That's good. Yeah, and this little guy also works. Yeah, and the spinning ship. Oh, it looks so awesome. And well, the boss also works. But the box doesn't quite look right, right? So this is my um, this is the next step here. So we need to also have support for bigger sprites. Now here's the deal, ladies and gentlemen. Drawing a bigger sprite is easy, um, but making the collision detection work uh, it's gonna be maybe a bit difficult. But um, let's just do one after another. So what I want to do here is something like by default. We're gonna have something like SPRW, sprite width. I'm gonna set it to one, and sprite height is also something that we're gonna set to an SPRH, SPRW. Um, two properties telling us how wide and high the sprite is of a of a of a given enemy. But for the boss, uh, we're gonna change them to two two. And then when we draw the enemies. Uh, where are we drawing the enemies? Drawing particles, drawing sh <laughs> waves is still uh, 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 this is such a good. In uh, there we go, drawing enemies. That's what I wanted. Uh, oh yeah, we're using the draw my SPR function. Let us upgrade that function so it supports uh, sprites of different sizes. Um, that's gonna be tools. Uh, let's lose, use Alt up and down to find it. Uh, wasn't that uh, there? There, draw my SPR. So we're drawing the sprite on the X and Y, and then next, um, we already had that when we were drawing the explosion. Uh, the next two properties will tell us how many uh, sprites in width and height should this entire big sprite be. Uh, so let's go my SPR dot SPR width. 
and my SPR dot SPR H. We're just dropping in those two properties that we just created, which usually are one, one, but for the boss, they're going to be two, two. So for the boss, uh, we're going to draw a bigger sprite. And let's run this. Mm, but alas, we have a problem. I can see a problem here. Mm, do you see the problem? Our, our ship doesn't look right. Mm, and the, the, also the, the bullets are not being shown. Oh, but the boss is good. <laughs> the boss is good. Uh, okay. So let me think about it. So there's two solutions. One solution is to be, be, be like, okay, we're going to... Mm, the problem is like some of the sprites that we're drawing right now, which is the bullets and the ship, uh, they don't have the property uh, SPRH. And so uh, when apparently what happens is when this, uh, you know, this SPR function here, when it gets like nil put in those spots, uh, what it does, it doesn't draw the sprite at all, uh, which is a bit annoying. Uh, something we can do is uh, here, we can do like an if statement and see if we are about to draw something that has, where the properties are not set. And if they are not set, we're going to set them to one. Uh, but I don't like to have this kind of like extra if statement here in the draw sprite function. Uh, we're just gonna, you know, take the extra, take the extra st steps. And we're gonna add those sprite width and height uh, properties. We're just gonna add them to all of the other sprites that we're currently drawing. I think that's that's gonna be fine. Uh, so let's see. Uh, definitely, first let's start with ship. Right here's the ship. And let's just add sprite width and height to the ship. Uh, let's set it to one though. <laughs> uh, and then uh, another thing is an update function is where we spawning the bullets right here. And let's just add sprite width and height to the bullets. And you can you can see how this works, right? You have one one dude that is where something is different, where suddenly we're drawing a bigger sprite. And then suddenly all of the dudes have, have, have this property set to whether it is, you know, you have to spe suddenly specify for all of the objects that you're ever creating, whether it is a bigger or a smaller object. Like just like this one exception uh, creates kind of like this cascading problem where you suddenly have to go back and, and you know, add this property everywhere. It's a bit annoying thing, but, um, We'll survive. All right, so we can see our ship. We can see a little green guy. We exploded them. That's the red guy. And that's the spinny ship now. Yeah, baby. And that's the boss. Yeah. So you can see a little bit the problem with the boss. Um, the problem with the boss is um, the collision detection of the boss doesn't quite work out. So this is going to be a problem. We're going to have to maybe expand the collision detection a little bit so so the boss uh, reacts correctly. We're going to have to touch our, our very complicated co collision detection uh, function so it uh, supports maybe the things that are bigger and things that are smaller. But maybe that's good because maybe it allows us to also have like, uh, I already thought about this, like if the enemies are shooting bullets at us, maybe the bullets should be a bit smaller. So that would be nice maybe if we can expand this uh, this collision function to do that. Let us go through our update function uh, to our to-do list and see what's happening. Okay, we have, we do definitely have multiple enemies. Uh, we're gonna do. Uh, uh, we're gonna expand this e even more enemies. We maybe four enemies are not enough. I think we're gonna have more. Nice enemies is something that definitely that we're working on. We work on this today, so that's good. But we there's still uh, room for improvement. I think especially for the start screen, there's there's room for imp room for improvement. Wave logic. Uh, let me specify this. What I mean. Uh, where do enemies spawn? Really not sure about that. We're gonna have to figure this out. Um, better music integration. I think a winning music is still missing. Winning music. That's something that we haven't touched yet. Big enemies is something we did. But um, 
flexible collision detection is something that we have to do. Enemy bullets we definitely have to do. Right, so what I see is for the next episode, uh, we have a setup that we're gonna have to do this. Um, flexible collision detection, that's something I wanna maybe uh, take some time with because it, we might run into some problems. And when we get that going, we can think about, oh yeah, and maybe I wanna also add something else. Um, enemy behavior. Uh, currently enemies are just flowing, um, going straight, you know, and maybe we can wanna make some kind of like trails or something. Mm, I feel that kind of like fits in with the question, where do enemies spawn? Uh, all of these are kind of like questions that are related. All right, so instead of making the to-do list shorter, we made it longer, but I think also we made some of the challenges that are in front of us clearer. I would say it's time to go to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. Well, and the challenges for this doggy zone are very, very simple, very clear, and you probably already saw this coming. I want you to create a bunch of enemies. I want you to, if you haven't drawn your own enemies, then I want you to import the sprite sheet. You can always download the P8 file, um, uh, download doobly-doo. I mean, there's always, I'm gonna always post the P8 file at the beginning of the episode, uh, but I maybe for this episode, I will also upload it for, uh, at the end of the, of, the, of the episode, so we can all or get the, so you can import the sprites from this file here, and you can use them if you haven't created your own enemies. You can reuse the enemies uh, that were donated by the generous, generous artists from uh, from the Discord channel. That's really nice. Um, so the challenge is going to be pick a few of them and make them, make them alive, give them life. Um, uh, go through the process yourself of, of actually adapting some of those uh, characters. Pick ones that you like, draw ones that you like. Now I want you to go through this process of creating enemies. And then next, the big, big challenge, of course, is um, going to be tweaking the collision detection. But hey, again, maybe that's a challenge for you. Can you make it so that the collision detection with the boss enemies uh, that they work with the bigger sprites as well. Can you tweak this collision function so it works with bigger sprites? That's going to be a challenge for you as well for the doggy zone. We're going to tackle this next this next episode, but maybe you can figure it out yourself. And this is it, guys. This is this episode. At this point, big shout out and big big thank you for the people at Coffee for the supporters at Coffee who made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we are approaching the end of this uh, this phase one of the tutorial. This, this um, sh little shmup is coming together, but I really probably will have to sit down myself and kind of figure out uh, exactly, you know, if we're gonna have enemies fly in or maybe if it's better to set them up as in Space Invaders. Maybe you have some requests yourself, maybe post in the comment sections. What do you think uh, in which direction this, this shmup should go? Uh, I'm not quite sure myself and yeah, it's gonna be fine, interesting to find out. See you on the next episode, guys. Bye-bye.